Hello, this is the Lightning Stalker. So earlier today I had this brainstorm about a movable tap that you could put on coils, sort of like this one. This one is a 10 meter coil and it's, it's a little bit different from, you know, movable taps you can buy from like DX Engineering and stuff, other places online where I've seen them. And I got everything you need to make it here. Like, you can ignore this, because this isn't part of it, right? This coil. That's what we're going to put it on. Okay, so we have the copper strip. And then we have a nut. This is a brass nut. Then we have a screw to go into this nut. And our tools are just a pair of pliers. This is a heavier duty pair of pliers, because we're going to be bending stuff. And we need the extra, you know, leverage. Tin snips to cut the copper strip. A hammer, you might need to hammer it like this here is all bent curvy, you might need to hammer it to flatten it out. And then we got a hole punch. And you can just use a drill bit and a drill. You can get away with that. You probably want to use a step drill though if you have to use a drill. So you can see here I've got a line marked right, maybe you can see that, I don't know. Can you see it? That's where I'm going to cut. I just kind of measured two widths of the nut and then from there I measured the length of the threads on the screw. Now if you look, forgot to show you this, it's a button head screw. You don't want to use a uh, flat head screw for this because it will get in the hole that we make and it'll mushroom that hole out and it won't provide a good clamping force. So I'm going to take my tin snips and I'm just going to cut along that line I made. Because it's round, right? It's called diameter when it's round. So and the length of your screw will determine how long of a piece you need to cut. All right, so now I'm gonna try and flatten it out a little bit with the hammer. Let me just hold it down with the pliers or something. It's a little bit flatter. It's just a different type of, like, it wraps around the wire like this, and it kind of cradles it. So it's just a different kind of attachment. Use the hole punch next and punch the two holes. Now I'm going to punch the holes at the ends. Try to get them straight and centered on the strip. And it, you know, fairly close, but not too close to the end. Because when it starts to pull, if it's too close to the end, it's going to pull out. Oh, okay. All right. See our little disc that we cut out? You might want to save these too, because sometimes these will come in handy. And the other hole is at the other, whoops, the other hole is at the other end. So I'm going to do that now. Oh, yeah. Okay. So there we have it. Those are our two holes that we have to punch. Okay. So I'm going to take my tin snips and kind of round it off. Actually, I'm going to do that on all four corners. I'm just going to round it off just so we don't have any sharp points. Because those are really bad. Especially if you're pumping higher voltages through this. And what you probably want to do is go around the whole thing with a piece of sandpaper. Okay, you can kind of see that I cut off the corners so they're not sharp. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the nut and the screw. So what, see what I got here? So I put the nut and a screw through one of the holes. And now I'm going to like line up the nut 
so that the flats, the two flat sides are to the piece of copper. So I think the best way to do that is with my pair of pliers. Okay, now you can see for the most part. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bend this 90 degrees right at the edge of that nut as close as I can get so that it just folds over right around that side of the nut. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so what I'm going to do right here, just to start it out anyway, is put it in the pliers and then I'm going to tap with the hammer just to get it started bending a little bit. Okay, can you see this? I'm going to take the screw threads and the pliers and I'm going to bend this down some. Like that. Can you see that? I know you can't probably see it, but here you can see what I did. See how I'm bending this? This eventually has to get to a 90 degree angle so that it just hugs the side of that nut. Try it like this. I'm going to put this part in the pliers like this. And then I'm going to hit it like this. Okay, that's good. That's working. Okay. You can see how it is now. Now see how there's still a little gap between the copper and the nut? I'm going to get rid of that. You can kind of see how it's pretty close. Start bending this right there. Now this is going to be the part that actually, you know, supports on the back side of the wire in the coil or whatever you're connecting it to. Whatever you need it for. Alright, well I got it. Unfortunately my camera battery died, but there it is. You can see how I bent these two parts inwards like that. And then the two holes, they both line up right there. In the middle. See what it looks like. Okay, and then the screw and the nut go in like this. So if you look here, let's see if I can get a good angle for you. If you look here, the nut goes in like this right here. So like that. See? Hope you can see that. And then the screw, the screw just basically goes into in there from the other side like this. See, and then it threads into that nut like that. And then basically what it does is the end of the screw puts pressure on the wire that it's around, this will slip over the wire on your coil or wherever you have to tap onto a wire. And then this part here will support the other side. And then as you tighten this, you put your other wire that you're gonna use for your tap in there too. So that it's just on top of the wire you're tapping into. And then as you turn the screw, the screw will press down on those two wires and make a good connection, hopefully. All right, here we go. See, it goes over like this. Now, without the other wire, it's just going to be loose. But when you stick another wire in there, on top of that wire coming off this coil, there will hopefully be enough there for the screw to grab so that it'll get tight. Alright, so I hope you like that idea. Hopefully it 
you know, someone will be helped by it besides just myself. Share something that I, I, I could not find online like with a few simple searches. So, well, someone's probably done it before, but it's kind of like, you know what it's like? It's kind of like a split bolt in a way, sort of. And I've actually made these before. There's one on my uh, Smeter antenna. Uh, actually, there's two of them on there, one for each, since it's a balanced line on there. And, you know, it, it works really well. I mean, I had it on there for a good year or so. Uh, it was indoors, but, you know, it's always constantly getting bumped and stuff, and it didn't move. So, they're pretty good. They work pretty well. So, thank you for watching.